Time for another Christmas tree build. More right after this. I'm Rick, and this... Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. <laughs> this is the shack. Hello and welcome back to the shack. As you can see, it is raining Christmas trees, literally. So much of this around in stacks. I am in the last days of finishing up staining, painting, assembling, and preparation for the final two week push before Christmas. Make sure you are subscribed, hit that notification bell. Because the next video, we will talk about this tree. Today, we are going to talk about this. This is what I call my Christmas ornament tree. Ornament tree because we have three dowel rods in here to hang garland, Christmas decorations, lights, whatever you want, hang on it. I don't know if you can hear that. We got terrible, terrible wind today. Kills me because I needed to be outside doing some cutting. Yeah, that ain't happening, so I got to do what I can do inside. Material. On this build, it is up to you. Some of these I made with reclaimed lumber and left them natural. And I have a red stain, the same red stain that I use on my rustic flags, dowel rods, and I had a red stain. It looks real nice. This is just painted red. This was not finished yet. You're going to need a one by two by 96. That will build both of these Christmas trees. You'll need one dowel rod, 48 inches. These are quarter inch. The cut list will be in the description below. So check out down there. I will have a list, but understand it. That is a guideline. Let me explain. My first batch of trees I did, the bottom overall length was 12 and 5 eighths. This set is actually half inch thinner because I didn't get the cut up here was off maybe about a quarter degree half a degree you get close but it's not perfect and because it wasn't as wide it was a little sharper cut it was a little bit thinner at the bottom so my overall length was actually 12 inches I lost a half inch about five eighths of an inch but I lost a good half inch so the bottom we cut last once we get the sides cut put them together and we determine our uh, bottom piece. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to cut these 18 inches in length. I cut mine a little over length. I think I cut them at 18 and 3 16 So by the time I set them in the jig, cut my angle, flip it over, cut the bottom angle, I can cut it to my final dimension of 18 inches. This one is 14. I got a stack of these here. I got to assemble yet. 14 and actually these are 14 and 5 eighths. Yeah, right, to, right at 14 and 5 eighths. Mine are kind of specific to what my perspective is. This is how I wanted it. Let's cut the sides to our first dimension. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut us some side pieces, which are 18 inches. I cut mine about 18 and 3 16 Just give me a little extra to give me a little room to shave the angles at either end. I'm gonna check the measurement on the left side because the left side is, is my stop block and this is the piece we're keeping. So this is our final cut piece. I am at right at 18 and three, maybe a 32nd over, 64, real close. Just a little past the line of 3 16 Perfect. Where'd my mask go so I don't have to sniff in all that sawdust. Always wear my RZ mask out here, especially in with the chop saw, it makes a lot of dust so. Don't want to be sniffing that stuff. Now I always start with a clean edge. Sometimes the ends are a little miscut, kind of weird looking. So I'm going to flatten this out. Nice straight cut. So now I bring it there. Make sure it's right. Dead. There we go. And there we have it, one piece. Now the shorter tree, the two sides are 14 and a half. So I'm cutting them about 14 
and about 11 16 not quite three quarter just a little shy of three quarter that gives me little air room little fudgeting to cut the tip and then cut the, the bottom at the final angle to get my final length i don't want anything to end up being short screw myself so i would cut it just a little bit long so let's cut two pieces now at 14 11 16 right there so remember you can make two complete trees out of one one by two by eight I am cutting these in bulk. I got a lot of them to make. Always start with a nice fresh edge. Oh man, right on the knot. Ah. Uh, all right, you start at the other end now. <laughs> Downfall about this stuff, there's not probably in the worst possible place. There's a nut right at the end here. There we go, better. Now it's time to cut the angle, the tip of our tree. How we're going to do, to do that is you need a scrap piece of wood. In my case, I just grabbed the closest piece I had was a two by four. I think a one by six or even a two by six would work better because you have more surface for your piece to lay against so it has no chance of rocking. This is your two by four. So you, you, the pivot here, you got a lot sticking out here. It'd be easy to wobble that and to miscut your angle versus you have at least a one by six. This isn't just as a piece of wood. Look at all the surface here you have. It's much harder for it to, to teeter totter when you have more surface to lean against. So I would suggest at least a one by six or a two by six piece of stock laying around and cut that at a 45 degree angle. Now that we have our 45 degree angle cut, move your miter saw to 25 degrees. With the miter saw set at 25, take the piece that you cut at 45, bring it to where the tip just kisses the blade. Once it just kisses the blade, clamp the piece of stock down right there. Now take your stock, you're going to slide it in till the corner of the stock just gets flush or even with the tip of the 45. Bring you another piece of stock on the opposite side, butt it up against the stock laying on the 45 angle. That way it prevents it from going in any further by the blade. Clamp that side down, dry fit your stock into the jig there a little bit. Make sure that it's going in far enough, not too far or not far enough. Make sure it's right there where you want it to be. Now we can do our cut. Cut all four pieces. Now that we have both trees cut, the tips, we got to angle the bottom. Now remove your setup, the jig, if you will, and set your uh, miter saw at 18 and a half degrees. Once you get it set at 18 and a half degrees, get you your stop block, but you want to have your 70 degree angled end. That's my stop block, that's my fence. If I have it this way, it has a tendency, because it's such an angle, it can be pushed underneath a little bit. So you can drastic, but see, you can make it underneath. Flipping it over now, there's no way that's going to slide underneath. You're going to get more consistent, repeatable cuts this way. So on the long end here, not the inside, the long edge, measure 18 inches. And you see this is dead on 18. Make your mark at 18 inches and bring your blade down till it hits right on that 18 inch mark and cut there. It doesn't matter if you're 16th higher or lower. It doesn't matter at this point. You want it as close to 18 as possible. Set that stop block up, put your other piece on there, cut that. Do the same thing for the other side for your other tree, 
but these are 14 and a half inches. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're almost got her finished. We have our 70 degree angle done. We have our 18 and a half degree angle done. So again, we're gonna go back to this, make sure it's clamped down. Our tips are even with each other. The piece of stock that you cut everything from, cut the very end of that, give that the 18 and a half degree angle, cut that piece so it'll be, it'll have the angle like that. So this is your piece that's longer. You got the one edge cut, set it on there, flush up the one end, the other end, scribe your line. Again, make sure your angles aren't the same way. Left or right, you want them coming in and facing each other. Whichever way you have this angled, you cut it. If it's on this side, you angle, you cut it. You're gonna to have to flip it. Come down to where you have your mark and cut it a little large. Dry fit your, your cut. If it's, a little, if it's a little long, go back and shave it down till it's even on both sides. Do the same for the shorter tree. And there we have both the bottoms. We basically have a triangle now or our the basis for our tree. We're going to mark these so we know where we're going to drill. I just divided this equally right here where the cut levels off. I'm gonna put my ruler as close as that as I can get, and that's where I'm gonna start at one. I'm gonna go down four inches so it'll mark it at five here. Five more, in four, five more inches. <laughs> four more inches and it's nine. And then at 13. So if I was lined up right here, it'd be 4, 8, 12. These are flush back here. That looks good there. Hold them there. And we're just going to make that mark all the way across. There we go. Keep these in pairs. Now on the smaller trees, I'm only putting two dowel rods across. And basically, instead of measuring off the edge here, I'm just going from the bottom, right at the very edge right here, setting it at one, and I'm only going up five inches, so it'll be six, and then four inches, 10. The reason that I want to do that is so I can put maybe one little ornament here and one big ornament here. Offset it in sizes. It's just what I want to do. Flushing it up. These are nice here. Just the two. I'm going to mark all these. Then we're going to head over to the drill press. Now in order to drill these at an angle, I made this little jig. Basically, this is a two by four. I put in after I got done cutting these, and of course the block that was sitting here to stop this, I had to bring it out a little bit. But the same principle, slid the two by four in until it got right to the edge, bring, brought the other block over, locked in so it wedged it in there, cut the two by four, that's this, and that's the angle it's sitting on, the same angle as the tip. Then I basically sat this in the middle, Put a scrap piece of the one by two here, glued it, nailed it. This side is basically the same, but I offset it a little bit. I just set a piece of wood in there, clamped this like this, glued this side, nailed it. So when I put this in, I basically line the line up that I'm going to be drilling, wedge that in there, and it keeps it nice and snug. So all I have to do is just drill it out. It'll keep it there. Hopefully it won't be taken off because if it goes down, it puts, pulls the wedge in so it won't be sliding out. And all I have to do is wedge that in there and when I'm done, pop it out. Now the first time I did this, I put the top in first. That's wrong. It goes bottom first because the angle was wrong. So we're going to drill these from the bottom up first. So let me wedge this in here. Now I have this set where it's just about quarter inch, I guess. This whole thing goes in, as you saw. Mm -hmm. 
That's simple. With my Bundy clamp holding the top firm, again, make sure that both sides are equal up here. My first hole is right here. I'll make a little mark so you can see about where I'm measuring from. So I'm gonna go off the one and the mark there, I am right at three and a half inches. So if I'm a quarter inch in, about right there, quarter, so I'm gonna cut it at four inches. So I'm gonna get my dowel rod. Right there. But I set this on here, right about my mark. I absolutely love this saw, but it is very fragile. And as you see, I dropped it and I broke a tip off, which really upset me. But the worst part is right here, I was cutting one of my, uh, what was I doing? I was cutting a little piece or trimming something off and I hit a nail I didn't even know was in there and it busted off there and there. I said, this is very fragile, perfect for flush trim on my finish work and it's good for stuff like this, but yeah, I've, I've messed up a few times and I dropped it, but I would like to get another one. I just haven't got it yet, but this is perfect to cut the dowels. I'm not pushing hard, just let it cut itself. Put it in the drill. That helps it out. Round over the edge, makes it nice. Smooths everything out real good. Just give it a quick little sanding. Now let's see, see it slides in much easier now. I round it over the edge. Still not enough. There it goes. There, that works. Now see we have a solid fit there. Good seam on both sides. And there we are on our dowel. Again, I'll hold these up here. Now I'm gonna see what I get on the measurement on this one. So I'm gonna go to quarter inch. And that is right at barely Five and a quarter. Let's do five. I'm gonna go a sixteenth below. So I'll do five and seven sixteenths. So what I like to do, I like to put them both in and then see what kind of results I get. Oh, look at that. There we go. Now see, I pushed in so I can actually open it up a little bit and I got plenty of room. Perfect. And this one is right at Seven and seven eighths. And down here, damn fly. Get that one set in the hole, that in the hole. There we go. Good fit, but yeah, that's tight. <clears throat> so I think 
I'm going to sand those ends a little bit better and we should be good to go. That's better. Slides in better. I said just a little bit of working. Oh, much better. Much, much better. And there we have it. Now it's done. It's got a solid top fit up here. Both sides looks good. And there's all of our dowel rods cut to fit. Do the same for the other tree with the two dowel rods in it, or you don't have to put any dowel rods in. It's totally up to you. So now we're going to paint. Now that everything is cut, we need to sand everything first, then assemble. So when I assemble these, I use my Bundy clamp, of course. I glue them up. That holds it there. I put a two 23 gauge inch pin nails in here, <clears throat> in here just to hold it while it dries. And the same thing on the bottom. I put the glue on there and I put two 23 gauge pin nails in there just to hold it. That way you don't see any brad nails at all. So I will go through the process how I finished mine. I will show you how I do it. The reason I do it that way is simply because I wanted the dowel to be natural. That's why I painted the inside first. I didn't paint the top up here. Let me get this to me. I don't paint this. I put a piece of tape from here down, so I made sure I didn't get any paint on the glue surface area. And on the bottom, I stopped maybe about an inch from the bottom because I didn't want to get any paint down here. I just painted all this in here and the edges. So when I glued them up, I didn't have to worry about painting any of this and getting paint on my natural wood dowel. finalize it you have a couple of options on that also I know a lot of people when they do these they put an extra piece of wood on the bottom actually a little bit shorter piece when they make theirs and they make them like that I don't like that because it's still wobbly I had a tree fall over cut it down into various pieces I'm trying to figure out little projects I can use for it and I thought this is a perfect project very rustic looking it's just the three and a half to four inch diameter branches i cut them in like two inch pucks like a hockey puck but two inch thick simply going to drill a three-eighths dowel hole here 
put a 3 8 dowel hole in there and put it together. I don't know if I'm going to glue it. That way I can just lay it in the box, lay that flat and then pack it away for next year. I think next year I may make a few of these and on a five inch piece of wood, this is what I was thinking of would be even better than another piece down here. Five inch piece of wood, cut you a half lap in the middle, half lap in the middle of this and set it that way. So when, you're, when it sits down, there's no way for it to rock back and forth side to side because that will keep it secure. It's not going to rock back and forth this way because it's long and flat. There's no chance for it to wobble, but it doesn't have any support going this way. That's why I don't like just adding another piece of wood this way. You still can fall over this way. Turning it and doing a half lap this way prevents that. And you don't have to glue this either. Make sure the fit is snug when you're done take it off lay it in here lay it in the box store it for next year next year you're ready take it out snap it in and you're good to go ah uh, so this is the next video i'm going to show you how we build these make sure you're subscribed hit that notification bell so you're notified when that comes out i'm trying to get these out every day i may have a hiccup here or there so they may be every other day but i'm trying to get at least four to five videos out this week Thanks for watching. Be blessed. Take back your for your sanity. We are done. We will see you next video.